This is the visit teletraining on above anvil cirrus plumes. These are indicators of severe storms that are obvious in visible and infrared satellite imagery. I'm Scott Lindstrom from SIMS. My co-authors on this are Chauncey Schultz from the National Weather Service and Chris Bedka at NASA Langley. Chris Bedka has investigated the relationship between AACPs and severe weather. The AACP in this image is that smoke-like plume that it's extending from the region of the overshooting top. You just saw this image on the title slide. Here's an expanded view. The above anvil cirrus plume is that wispy feature that is downwind of the overshooting top. In this color enhancement of an infrared image, the 10.3 micrometers from ABI, the above anvil cirrus plume is warm. It's warm because it's in the stratosphere. Investigation of AACPs has used a multi-instrument approach. Radar imagery tracks the storms, and it is combined with multispectral ABI data, radar imagery of storm rotation, updraft, and microphysical data, ENTLN total lightning, severe weather reports, and National Weather Service watch and warnings where appropriate, all this is used to identify severe storms and to analyze the AACP signature. The observations are taken at very high temporal resolution. AACPs correlate well with very strong updrafts and wave breaking in and ice injection into the stratosphere. Plumes are a warm anomaly if the atmospheric thermal structure is well behaved. That is, if there is a well-defined tropopause and a warmer stratosphere above. You can find examples of cold AACPs, however. Be aware of that. A plume is easy to find in visible imagery, especially in low light, that is when the sun is low in the sky. The cirrus plume is thin, so infrared energy can penetrate through from below, diluting the warm signal. The warm signal should originate from near the overshooting top. It's a very strong updraft that punches through the tropopause, causing wave breaking. Here is an example that shows what a plume looks like in visible imagery in the bottom left, in the sandwich product in the upper left, and in two different infrared enhancements on the right. Don't be afraid to tweak the enhancement to view the plume if you think it is present, because its presence should make you more bullish on warning issuance. Here we have the same storms, same enhancements, a little bit later. You can see a couple of well-developed plumes. Here is the title slide again. Do you see multiple plumes in these different convective complexes? Change the infrared enhancement to bring things out. Or you could tweak a given enhancement to bring things out. This shows calliope measurements across a plume. Note that the plume is between the two arms of the enhanced V and downwind of the overshooting top that is the vertex of the enhanced V. This region between the two arms of the enhanced V corresponds to where you see the AACP in the calliope data up here. AACPs are relatively easier to find in visible imagery. If you have just a single infrared image, it can be tough to view the AACP. Animations do make it somewhat easier. This is an excellent example of multiple severe storms and multiple plumes over the high plains. Can you pick out the plumes? 
warning polygons are under the storms with plumes, and observed severe weather also occurred near the plumes. Scientific study on plumes and their relationship with severe weather required plume identification. This slide describes the methodology and how the identified plumes correlated with observed severe weather. How are plumes identified? Some methodology is listed on this slide. Why is plume identification important? Look at the black lines in these slides showing the paths of storm tracks with plumes compared to the white lines which are storm tracks with no plumes. The overlay of severe weather events, winds, hail, and tornado, those occur far more frequently on top of black lines, the plume storms, compared to the white lines, the non-plume storms. Indeed, plume storms produced 14 times as many severe events as non-plume storms. Three quarters of all supercells generated plumes. 59% of plume storms were severe. 73% of the storms producing very large hail, defined as greater than 2 inches, strong winds exceeding 65 knots, or EF2 plus tornadoes were generated by plumed storms. They really do indicate the likelihood of severe weather. Use the presence of a plume to boost your confidence for warning issuance. The AACP will typically occur for storms that produce them before warning issuance. Especially if you have a region of poor radar coverage or if your radar goes down, the presence of an AACP can give you vital information in identifying which storms are most likely to be severe. An MCS can also generate plumes, and the relationship between a plume and observed severe weather remains. This is a series of box and whisker plots. First I'm showing you the 40 dBz relationship to the tropopause height, and whether or not a plume is present. Those are listed down along the bottom. A plume storm is more likely to have 40 dBz returns near the tropopause. This reflects the strong updraft. There's a similar relationship with Nexrad divergence. Stronger updraft, stronger divergence, more likelihood that there's a plume. The height of large ice particles, therefore, is higher for plume storms. That's related to the updraft acceleration and the strength of the plume. But both plumed and non-plumed storms can have cold infrared temperatures. You shouldn't use cold temperatures alone to identify a severe storm. Next I'm going to show you some radar imagery. We're going to be focusing on this storm on the right hand side. Reflectivity is in the upper left. Storm relative velocity is in the upper right. Reflectivity at minus 20 C is in the lower left. MRMS mesh is in the lower right. I'll play this animation a couple times. At the very end, the warning has been issued on that storm. Looking just at the radar, how confident are you that the warning will verify? You should be a little more confident because we have an overshooting top and the storm is producing a pretty nice plume. 
Now let's look at the satellite imagery for this complex before the issuance of the warning. I hope you can pick out the enhanced V's, the overshooting tops, and the plumes. Here's what the storm looked like when the warning was issued. The warning was issued at 124 UTC for a quarter inch hail and 60 mile per hour winds. Let's follow the evolution of the radar now. So that was for 14 minutes. At 138 UTC, the tag was increased to 1.5 inch hail and 60 mile per hour winds. And at 148 UTC, 3.5 inch hail was observed. Here's the satellite imagery for the same time from 124 UTC. until after the three and a half inch hail was observed. I hope this example shows you how you can use the presence of a plume to inform your warning decision process. Here's an animation from the time of the hail observation and then extending out about 10 or 15 minutes. If you want to learn more about plumes, Chris Bedka has published this article in Weather and Forecasting. Check it out. Here are some concluding comments. You want to use your knowledge of plume to inform your warning decision process. If the storm you are scanning on radar has a plume associated with it, you should be more confident in issuing your severe thunderstorm warnings because storms with plumes have been shown to be associated with severe weather. This concludes the short training on above and full cirrus plumes, AACPs. Thanks for listening.